Ooh, yeah, let's go. Sippy sippy. What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophia and this is my channel, Sophia Sees Beauty, where we talk about all things beauty and makeup. Now, if you guys have seen my channel before, you will know that I normally focus on more luxury beauty items, but I do love me some ColourPop. And I thought what would be fun is in the spirit of New Year's Eve, we would review the ColourPop Feeling Bubbly collection. This is a collection ColourPop recently released that is inspired by one of my favorite things, sparkling wine. And if you guys do not know, I do have a level three certificate in wines from WSET. So what we're gonna be doing today, what I thought would be fun, would be to do my regular review process of this collection. I have several items from this collection, so we're gonna get a nice good review for you. But we're also going to be drinking and learning about sparkling wine. I'm gonna be sharing all of my top tips about what is sparkling wine, what is the difference between champagne and cava and prosecco, how to open a bottle of wine, how to serve a bottle of sparkling wine, and what kind of food to pair it with. So if that is interesting and you want to start the new year off with some new tips and maybe impress your friends in 2022, keep watching. Okay, party people, we are up close and personal because we are going to start off with an unboxing of this collection. And just a quick rundown of the products that I purchased. I got all of these from the ColourPop website. I have the Feeling Bubbly eyeshadow palette. This is a nine pan palette. I have both of the Super Shock highlighters that are right here. I have one of the Lux glosses and I have the Crystal Face Pearls. So we're going to maybe play around with these today and create something fun. I did not pick up the Jelly Mud shadows only because as much as I love those, they do irritate my eyes and my eyelids break out in hives. So we're going to skip those. I learned that I cannot wear those unfortunately, but they are very beautiful. But before we unbox this, we have to unbox our sparkling wine. So today I'm drinking La Marca Prosecco. This is kind of like my go-to affordable Prosecco and I saw that it came in this adorable little mini bottle. So this is what we are working with today. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to properly uncork a sparkling bottle of wine. All right guys, so the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna remove this outside foil. So I'm gonna do that real quick. This can be a little tough at times when you have claws like me. <laughs> Now I'm realizing my little mini bottle here is actually a twist off, which makes things very, very easy for me. But typically what you would do is you would remove the outer wire cage first. Mine does not have one of those. You would keep your finger on the cork or your hand on the cork, turn your bottle at 30 degrees away from your guests. Okay, folks, we don't want this to pop off into anybody's faces. And then you want to carefully not turn the cork, but actually turn the bottle while carefully releasing the air with a very, very small pfft sound. Now that is the proper way to do it. I was shopping on Williams Sonoma the other day and I came across a champagne saber. I think it was like $400. I will link it down below. And there was a small moment where I thought to myself, yeah, Sophia, you do need that luxury champagne saber. <laughs> just like whack it off. That's one way to do it, but this is the way that they teach you in school, folks. Okay, so before I pour myself a glass, I am gonna unbox the ColourPop Feeling Bubbly collection for you all. Starting off with the Feeling Bubbly nine pan palette. This is the outer packaging. I always like to show the packaging for ColourPop products just because it's so unbelievably cute. I love this. And then this is the palette for you all. It's a very beautiful neutral palette. Some may say kind of a boring palette, but I, you know, despite this being boring and despite this being something that I don't really need, I really do love champagne shades and I love the theme of this palette. So this is what the palette looks like. We're gonna get into swatches in just a moment. Also I have the Super Shock highlighter in two shades. This one is called Champagne Baby or Champagne Baby. This is what the packaging looks like. It's very similar to the eyeshadow palette. And this is what the outer packaging looks like. And I'll try and post some close-ups for you guys. And it just looks like your typical ColourPop packaging. I also have the color Flute Punch, which is the lighter toned highlighter. And I will be swatching for that in just a moment, but it is the same packaging overall. This is what the Lux Gloss looks like. And I have the color Sippy Sippy. I love that name, <laughs> Sippy Sippy. 
That's what I'm about to do. I just turned my lights down for you guys. So you can see a little bit better. I love in particular the packaging of the gloss with like the little bubbles. This is just so cute to keep in your purse. And I can tell this is gonna be such a pretty like multi-dimensional glittery shade. And these are the crystal face jewels. And I got these because these are like teeny tiny little pearls. And I thought those were really pretty. I do have some other jewels from ColourPop that are more more like traditional crystals, but I thought these were particularly fun because they were like little pearls and they're just so, so pretty. Ooh, yeah. Cheers. Let's get into the swatches, friends. Before we do that, you're probably wondering, what exactly is sparkling wine? What is the difference between sparkling wine and champagne? Sparkling wine is basically a category of wine. And the reason that it is sparkling and it has these bubbles and what makes it different from a still wine that you probably have tried before if you are someone that enjoys drinking wine. There are bubbles in here because this kind of wine undergoes a second fermentation. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But what happens is that when the yeast is eating the sugars in the grape, it's creating not only alcohol, but it's also creating CO2. And because the wine is under pressure at the point that this second fermentation is happening, we get CO2 dissolving into the wine and that's what creates the bubbles. And so that's what makes a sparkling wine. And wines such as Champagne, Prosecco, Cava, Moscato, Deasti, all of these are kind of like styles of sparkling wine, but sparkling wine is the actual category. So if you're ever not sure what kind of wine it is, but you see those bubbles, you can call it sparkling wine. And usually what you're gonna see with sparkling wine is they tend to have a higher acidity level because it's going to be balancing out the sweetness that you also get from this style of wine. Typically they're growing these grapes in cold climates so that they can get a good balance of both fruitiness and crispness and acidity to ultimately balance out the extra sweetness that is gonna be in this style of wine. So that's why you usually see these types of wines produced in colder climates like Champagne or Northeast Italy, for example, when it comes to this Prosecco that we're drinking. So now that we know that, let's watch this palette. I'm gonna do this just one at a time, kind of going row by row. First we have Pop Off, which is this gorgeous sparkling champagne shade. <laughs> Next, we have So Complex, which is sort of this beige, light beige blending shade, I would say. Next, we have Zesty, which is this shimmering gold. Next, we have Blanc Slate, which is this mid-tone matte brown. Next, we have Bubble Up, which is another mid-tone matte brown, but a little bit, I would say, warmer and different in tone than Blanc Slate. Next, we have Clink Clink, which is a dark matte brown. Next, we have Arbane, which is another shimmering champagne shade. I actually had to look up what this was. I didn't know what Arbane or Arban was, and it's actually a type of low yielding grape that they use for making champagne, but there's not that many hectares left of this particular grape. So it's sort of like, an obscure grape that they use for making sparkling wine in champagne. So, fun fact for you all. And the last color is called Get a Grape, which is this darkest brown. So as you guys can see here, really, really pretty. I think everything swatched very, very beautifully. I love in particular these shimmers. I'm very excited to try those out. Very, very basic palette, but you know what? You've got all of the different tones that you need for mattes to create a good look. And you have some really awesome shimmer options in there as well. Now you might be asking yourself, how do you serve a glass of sparkling wine, Sophia? Well, first off, you serve your sparkling wine well chilled. This means 43 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit or for my more international friends, that is six to eight degrees Celsius. So you want it to be very, very cold so that it can be extra refreshing. You get that nice burst of the bubbles, the acidity, maybe the fruitiness, maybe the toasty notes. That's the best way to serve this style of wine. And most folks like to drink sparkling wine out of a fluted glass because it sort of enhances the effect that you get from the bubbles. The bubbles have to travel up the glass. They have farther to travel. And so that kind of like allows them to really burst once they get to the top. Now, some folks do like to drink sparkling wine out of a wider glass. They say that it helps them really smell the aromas and really be able to evaluate the wine more. But for our purposes, I would say the most popular way to enjoy this type of wine is through a fluted glass. Now let's watch these super shots highlighters. I'm going to start off with the color Flute Punch, which is the lighter of the two. And fun fact, when I bought these, I totally thought that they were 
super shock eyeshadows and I thought to myself, wow, these have been getting kind of expensive. Wow, it's buttery smooth. Like it is so smooth. I'll kind of show you that on my finger. I think it's a little bit easier to see. That is absolutely blinding. I can't wait to get that on my face. That's really, really pretty. Let's see if I can turn the lights up so you guys can see. It is winter time here in the Northeast of the United States and we don't have a lot of light. So I'm sitting right in front of a window, but I think we're getting snow today. So sorry if the light isn't the best today, guys. Next, we have the color Champagne BB or Champagne Bebe. Now this is gonna be for you folks that have a darker skin tone. You can clearly see right there, that is a stronger gold. This is the kind of thing I would use on the eyes. I love these colors. And this one, even more so than the other one, is extremely creamy. I don't think that this would work on my cheekbones at all. So I think in the demo, we're definitely gonna use this one, but I think maybe we can use this one on the eyes. And I did wanna just kind of show you folks, for those of you who have darker skin tones, what the difference is between those. I think this is gonna look gorgeous if you have darker skin. Next, we have the Lux Gloss in the color Sippy Sippy. And I would say this has like a creamsicle scent. I actually really like this particular scent. And I'm gonna swatch that right here for you guys because I think that's the best place you're gonna be able to see it. I'll try and post some close-ups for you all, but that is a gorgeous gold shimmer that I think will work on any skin tone. Just because these are so sheer, this is the darkest color in the collection, and I got it because I do have darker toned lips, as you can see, and I just thought it was a little bit more interesting, and I thought that um, just folks that have a little bit more of a tanner complexion might want to see this, whereas the other colors, I think they would work for pretty much everybody. And that completes our swatches. Now let's get into the demo. All right, let's start off with a demo of this gorgeous neutral eyeshadow palette. I think this would be really great for any of you guys that maybe you don't have a lot of neutral eyeshadow palettes or you want something that's gonna be kind of cheap and cheerful and very travel friendly. Or if you just love neutrals, this is gonna be a really good basic palette for you all. I'm thinking that we're gonna do something like maybe a halo eye today. I haven't seen anybody really do that on Instagram yet. So that's kind of what the vibe I'm feeling for today. So we're gonna give that a shot. I'm gonna start off with this color, which is called Belong Slate. I'm just gonna pop that into the crease. These shadows are very pigmented, it looks like, so I am tapping off my brush. And so you guys are probably wondering, because you see me drinking Prosecco, and you're probably wondering, what is the difference between Champagne, Prosecco, and Cava? And so I'll kind of go through each of those to give you guys a little bit more knowledge to help you with your shopping, or maybe to just figure out which one you would prefer. Or, you know, to impress your friends, because who doesn't want to do that? So starting off with Champagne, Champagne is produced in a specific region of France called Champagne. And as I mentioned before, a lot of these areas, they do have sort of colder, crisper climates because that's good for growing these types of grapes. You want some good acidity, but you also want some good, you know, fruit flavor with that as well. And the thing about Champagne, the important thing to note, other than the fact that it's grown and produced in Champagne, is that they use a method called the traditional method. And the biggest thing to know about this method is that the wine undergoes that second fermentation specifically in the bottle. And what they do is that they have all these bottles racked up in the traditional way, and then every so often they go and they gently turn the bottle. And so over time, what happens is that the yeast has a lot of contact with the wine that is inside the bottle when it's undergoing that second fermentation. And because of that, it undergoes something that is called yeast autolysis. And that just basically means that the yeast is basically giving off some special flavors into the wine. And those flavors are things like toast, bread, biscuit, basically just like kind of those toasty flavors that maybe you get if you've ever had a very nice glass of champagne. And depending on the quality of the champagne, those flavors may be more complex or they may be less complex. And also in some places they're doing this with something called a gyro palette, which is basically a machine that does that turning 
you know, mechanically and not by hand. And so when it's done by hand, that's usually when you're seeing a bottle of sparkling wine or a bottle of champagne that is much more expensive than others. But the main thing to note in terms of the taste is that you're going to get more complex autolytic characters from that yeast because it's made in that particular method. All right, so we've got a nice base going on here. I'm gonna start building up some depth in the outer and inner corners and I'm going to start off by using these two colors right here which are Blanc Slate and Clink Clink. All right so let's just deepen this up a little bit guys. I'm using this little refer number 12. This is my favorite for building up depth. And so continuing our education here when you look at Kava, Kava is also produced in the traditional method. So you're gonna get a similar flavor, but one of the main differences is that it is produced in Spain, in many different areas of Spain, but mostly in Catalonia. Shout out to anybody who is watching that is from Catalonia. I've been there before. I've been to some of the Cava Cavs and they are very beautiful if you ever get a chance to go. And typically, again, one of the differences here is that they're just using different grape varieties. Most of their wines are produced using Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Meunier. In Spain, it's a little bit different. They have some different varieties. It is, you know, a different geographical area and a different geographical um, climate, but they are also still using the traditional method. So I would say typically, just kind of as a rule of thumb, Cava is also going to have similar flavors to Champagne, but on the whole, Cava typically tends to be a little bit more of a better value. It typically is a little bit cheaper than wines that you see from Champagne. Again, it really depends on the type of wine, but just as you're sort of like shopping or maybe choosing wine, if you want something that has like the flavors of, you know, toast and biscuit and, and kind of that yeasty flavor, Cava and Champagne are gonna be similar in that way. But a lot of times, you know, Cava, um, Kava is made using different grapes and typically is a little bit on like the cheaper side. I'm going to start building it up in the inner corner here as well. Now, what about Prosecco? Because that is what I'm drinking today. Now, Prosecco is produced in Northeast Italy in Prosecco DOC. And the biggest difference about Prosecco is that it's produced using a different method. It's produced using something called the tank method. So it does not undergo a second fermentation in the bottle. It does that second fermentation in the tank. And so what happens here is it has less contact with that yeast. And as a result, it doesn't have as much of that yeasty character. It retains that fresh, fruit character. So typically, if you want something that is a little more fruity, I would go for Prosecco. Um, you also can find some very affordable, really good options when it comes to Prosecco. And so that's what I recommend. If you want something that retains that fresh fruit character, that's high in acidity, that's going to be really refreshing. I love Prosecco for summer. I love it with sort of like fruit and sorbet, but don't worry, we'll get to the food pairings in a bit. So that is the main difference when it comes to Prosecco. It's made using a different method, less contact with the yeast, still a sparkling wine, but of course it's made using different grapes with a different method. So it's going to be a little fruitier and typically it's a little bit higher in sugar. Typically even despite what it says on the label, it's gonna be a little bit sweeter. So maybe keep that in mind as well. You know, if you get hangovers or headaches easily from this kind of wine, just maybe keep that in mind. And I am just blending this out with a little blending brush. I just want a really good depth all around the eye. I'm gonna go into the darkest color here, get a grape and build even more depth specifically on the outer corner. Now we just talked about, you know, Prosecco being a little bit sweeter. If you want a wine that is less sweet, you wanna pay attention to what it says on the bottle. You may have noticed a lot of bottles, they say things like, 
you know, demi sec, brute, extra brute, etc. Those are the sweetness levels because before they bottle the wine, they put something in called the dosage. And the dosage is basically a mixture of sugar and wine. And that's how they control the sweetness level at the end of the day. So if you look at the bottle and you see something that says demi sec, you know that that's going to be sweeter than something that says brute or extra brute. And if you want something that has the lowest level of sugar where they don't add any additional sugar at the end, there's still gonna be some sugar, right? Because it's wine, that's why it's tasty. You wanna look for a bottle that says zero dosage or brute natural. That's what you wanna look for. That is the lowest sweetness level with de or sweet being the sweetest. So you can look it up. There's basically a range of sweetness levels. And that's all that means is it's trying to just give the buyer a little bit more information so that you kind of can see how the wine's gonna taste once you open up the bottle. I'm gonna go in with this color, Arbane. That was kind of like the mid-tone shimmer. And I'm gonna start building, oh yeah, baby. Okay, that looks pretty. And I might take it up a little high here because I think that just looks so pretty. Comment down below if you are enjoying these tips because I just did this because I thought it would be fun and I thought maybe you guys would enjoy it because I've got some very sophisticated people watching my channel. I know you guys love luxury and the finer things and so I thought this would be a fun thing for us to do. I'm gonna be taking this darker color onto the under eye so we can basically just match up what we did on the top. I'm also putting the same shade Arbane to the center. We basically just want to kind of create a streak of a light, almost like the wine itself. I'm being cheesy with you guys now. Just kind of getting up close so you guys can see how that is looking. Again, I'm sorry the light isn't the greatest today, but I still think this is looking pretty. And I'm just gonna do the same on the other eye. This palette is performing spectacularly. Like I know that ColourPop is an affordable brand, but I really don't often have that many issues with ColourPop. And that's one of the reasons why I like to review it. I, I'm kind of lost when it comes to drugstore makeup a lot of times. But ColourPop, man, this is a very affordable palette. I will put all the prices and links to everything, by the way, in the description box below. I'm now going to go in with Pop Off, and we're going to put that in the inner corner. This was sort of that very, ooh, yeah, blinding highlight shade that we swatched first, which was this one right here. That is looking very, very pretty so far. And I'm just going back in with Get a Grape and building even more depth. I like to go back and forth and just kind of reevaluate how things are looking as I go, because it's kind of hard to tell in the beginning how deep you're gonna need it. Comment down below, what kind of wine do you guys enjoy? And if you don't drink wine, what do you like to drink? You know, is it cocktails or beer, or just water, hot chocolate? I love hot chocolate this time of year. I love putting Baileys in hot chocolate as a New Year's treat with a little bit of whipped cream on top. Oh, so good. Definitely gonna be doing that this New Year's, just gonna be having like a chill indoor thing with a couple of close friends. I am now taking this color So Complex, which I love that they named the most basic boring color in this palette, So Complex. I feel like that was a joke. I feel like that must be a joke, right guys? <laughs> like that is hilarious to me and I'm using that to just blend around the edges. I think this is looking really pretty. I wanna see what happens when I put some of the highlighter in Champagne BB. Just kind of like on the sides here to create a little more of a gradient. I think that'll look very nice, oh yeah. We don't want this to be too boring because this is a very glitzy, luxy look. I know a lot of times people do more glittery looks for New Year's, but I do think there's something really pretty and wearable about doing just kind of like this very natural, but also kind of sultry, shimmery, haloed eye type of look. So I just put on the Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara, and I think this is looking really pretty. I didn't do any eyeliner because I wanna show you guys how this looks so you can really see the beautiful eyeshadow. And also because we're gonna go in with those little mini pearls afterwards to kind of show you how you can take it up a notch. Okay, let's go in with the highlighter, which is called Flute Punch. And I have a Sonia G Detail Lotus Brush. 
and I know that these are usually best applied with your fingers, but I do wanna just see how this works first with a brush. It is picking it up. Ooh, very pretty. What do you guys think? Let's try, let's put it, tap it on with our fingers. <gasps> Ooh, you guys can see that. I know sometimes it can be a little hard to see the highlight on camera, but I'm pretty sure you can see this from space. And I'm just gonna blend it out a bit. Yeah, that's really pretty. I think this is a very solid highlight. Like if you don't have the Super Shock highlighters, I think this would be a really good basic one to try. If you have other ColourPop highlighters, like I don't really think that you need this, but I do think that this is a stunning highlighter. If you've never tried this formula, it is very good and it's very affordable, obviously, because it's ColourPop. So pretty. Let's put a little bit on like the brow bone too. I think this pairs really well with the eyeshadow palette. And so you're probably wondering, Sophia, what pairs well with sparkling wine? Well, I think the things that pair well with sparkling wine are typically things that are well balanced with sort of like the crispness and the acidity from sparkling wine. And especially with Prosecco, you get some of that fruitiness as well. I really like things that are either super salty or really high in fat. So for example, I really love cheeses, cured meats. I love a glass of champagne and a cheeseburger. I love that. Does anybody else like that? I like I like potato chips with sparkling wine. I like smoked salmon. I think that tastes fabulous because it's very salty. Cheesecake or anything that has kind of like that heavy cream component, I think the acidity kind of cuts through it very nice. I also think foods that are a little bit more delicate in nature, like oysters or caviar. I'm sure you have heard of like champagne and caviar. Well, I think caviar because it has such a delicate taste it goes really well with something that is equally sort of delicate and refreshing i also like sparkling wine especially prosecco with raspberries lemon sorbet lemon meringue any kind of like citrus flavor or light fruity flavor i also enjoyed that as well so those are just a couple of ideas for you guys if you're putting together some hors d'oeuvres or some snacks for your family or friends for new year's or whenever you're serving sparkling wine i think like a good cheese plate with charcuterie is delicious and maybe some seafood is really good, maybe some cheesecake or something that is like heavy cream or kind of like a fruity component. I think all of those would be excellent. All right, and lastly, I'm gonna go in with these little face crystals. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing, but I have my little tweezer men right here and I'm gonna go in and just try and create something that's a little bit, I don't know, ethereal and fun. I don't think I would wear these out on a regular day, but I think if I was having, you know, like a party or if I was going out for New Year's, I would definitely put these on. Why not have some fun? All right, friends, here is the final look. What do we think? I actually felt that these went on pretty well. Once you get the hang of it, it's very easy to do. I think my only feedback here is I think that I would love some smaller, like more of a range of smaller crystals here. I think that these ones at the bottom are just so big to kind of put on your face. I really like the smaller, more delicate ones. And I tried to sort of recreate, oh, you can already see one of them fell off, whoops. I tried to recreate kind of like the effect of the bubbles kind of like bursting at the top of the glass. That's what sort of inspired this. And I got these because it really did remind me of sort of this champagne theme. Let's just put that guy right back. I don't know how well these are gonna stay on. I bet if you use just a little bit of lash glue, these would probably stay on all night. But I think for the most part, these ones on the outer edge seem like they're pretty locked down. It's really just the ones in the corner that feel a little unstable. <laughs> All right, I had to readjust my camera there a little bit. Hopefully you can see me okay. Next up, I'm gonna be using the Lux Gloss. I'm very excited for this. This is in the color Sippy Sippy. And I typically like these glosses and I really like, ooh yeah, the creamsicle scent. If you are very sensitive to fragrance and you don't like a very, very sweet creamsicle scent, maybe don't get this. But if you want a very affordable, shimmery gloss i would definitely look into this and i would say these glosses are less oily less slippy 
they're not sticky they have kind of a creamy feel to them like very very moisturizing creamy feel i would say and so that is the gloss there let's layer a little bit more this is the darkest color but as you can see like it really doesn't show up that dark on my lips i bet this would look really really pretty if you had more of a brown toned lip or even just a nude lip in general whether you're light skin tone or darker skin tone everything shows up very pink on my lips and that's why i decided to get the darkest color but i think that that gives a very nice like glittery sheen and this does look very very glittery in the tube but on the lips i feel like it, it has a classier look so there we go this is the final look what do you guys think i think this looks super pretty i actually really like the crystals i don't think i would like go to work like this but i would definitely go to a party or have people over and just have a little bit of glam i think it definitely sort of evokes that little like bubbly sparkling effect of the wine Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that demo. Now we are going to evaluate this collection. I'm gonna share with you all my final thoughts. Starting off with the packaging, I think the packaging for this is really cute. It is ColourPop, it's a little bit more affordable, so it's not gonna be the most luxurious packaging in the world. I don't think that this is ColourPop's cutest packaging ever. I really have a fondness for a couple of their other collections like the Limoncello collection, the Hocus Pocus collection, I think were particularly done very, very well. I I think this is just kind of like average for ColourPop. Their packaging is always very cute. You are not getting a mirror with this, so just kind of keep that in mind. For me, I don't mind that because it keeps this very travel friendly, and I usually personally don't use the mirror on the inside of these products. I really like the lip gloss. I think that the packaging for this goes really well with just sort of, I don't know, the style and the theme of the particular collection. I think they captured the essence of sparkling wine really well. But at the end of the day, this is kind of what we expect from ColourPop. So I don't think it's anything super groundbreaking. If you're somebody that sort of likes to collect makeup, for nostalgia or for the packaging, if that's something that interests you. In terms of the actual products, I think this is an excellent palette. I didn't have a problem with any of the shades and we did use most of the shades in this palette. The only ones I didn't use were Bubble Up, Noted, and Zesty. Those were the ones that I didn't use, but we used pretty much almost all of the mattes and a couple of the shimmers. And then same with the lip gloss and with the Super Shock highlighters. I thought all of these applied super, super smooth. I didn't have any issues with these. I think that these would be great gifts. I think that if you have someone that's kind of like a makeup beginner or who hasn't tried ColourPop before, this is a really safe collection to go with because it is very neutral. And also the products are just so easy to apply. Even if you don't have the best brushes in the world, or maybe you're using like your fingers to apply the highlighter, just like I did, these are gonna be really great products for that makeup beginner. Or if you are just somebody that wants like a ride or die, palette that is neutral that you can travel with. I think this is going to be a really great palette to reach for on those days when maybe you don't feel so creative and you just want something that's going to look good if you know what I'm saying. So overall, I would give this collection pretty low marks in terms of creativity from ColourPop. I would have hoped to get something a little bit more creative, but I am happy there's no pressed glitters in this collection because God knows I don't really use those very much. I kind of wish there was maybe something a little bit more interesting, but I realized that they launched this during the holiday season because they wanted it to be champagne themed and they wanted something that would sell well and that was very neutral. So I don't really think that you need this palette, but if you were interested in this particular palette or any of the products in this collection, I don't think that you will be disappointed. I think you're really, really going to enjoy what you're getting. And yeah, it's just overall really, really good makeup, very affordable, cheap and cheerful price. So I can't really say anything bad about this collection other than the fact that it's just very neutral and a little bit boring, basically. 
I'm getting down to the bottom of this glass, which probably means it's about time to wrap up this video, but I hope you guys enjoyed this style of video. Comment down below and let me know, did you enjoy my wine facts? Was this helpful at all? Was this entertaining? Are you interested in this collection? Do you buy ColourPop? Let me know what kind of products you guys are interested in. I know I cover mostly luxury makeup, but I do love me some ColourPop as I mentioned in the beginning. So definitely comment down below and let me know what you think. Also remember to give me a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel, lets me know what kind of content you guys like, and it helps the YouTube algorithm spread my videos to the rest of our community. And if you have made it this far in the video, definitely consider subscribing to my channel. I have a lot of really awesome videos queued up for the next couple of weeks. I love making content for you guys, and I would love to have you as a part of my Sophia Sees Beauty community. Also, definitely follow me on Instagram. I will put my handle up here, and I always link it in the description box below. It's just sophia.sees.beauty on Instagram. We have a lot of fun over there. I post a lot of mini demos, mini reviews of products. I let you guys know what sorts of things I'm buying, what sales I'm shopping, little tips and tricks, and just fun things all around in the beauty community. So definitely follow me on Instagram as well. I hope you guys have a fantastic New Year's Eve and an amazing 2022. Cheers.